And so we come to the final session of the day, and I kind of change hats because um, I'm going to share with you how to put into practice, how to make happen, how to actually make what you've heard today real in your situation. Before I do that, though, can I just say from Phil at the start to Craig at the end, we've heard from some real experts today, so please give them another huge round of applause. <laughs> Craig, from the start of your talk to the end, roughly... How many how-tos do you think you gave to this room? And I kept them, this is, because I'm not really an expert in this area, so I actually decided to add them up. How many do you think you gave? Specific exact things to do? 10 or 15. 10 or 15, what do you think? 50. 50, 71. <laughs> 71 how-tos. So which, mean, which means throughout the day we probably had what? 72? Um, no, sorry. <laughs> um, through, I'm glad about that, because... Um, <coughs> You know, I, I, just, I just hate going on these theoretical days where people quote um, academic stuff or jargon stuff or um, basically give you examples that are not relevant to you. And we've had probably today over 500 how-tos. And this session, which is making it happen, um, is going to share with you exactly how to do just that to make it happen. Before I do that, I'd like to thank you for being a great group to facilitate, and particularly during the breaks when you came up to me and didn't hold back on how you thought it was all going, so thank you for that. And what I'd like on reflection, listening to Craig, I think the best way to structure this final session, which is really your session, not mine, is to split it into two with your permission. I think in the first session, I'll share with you everything you need to know to achieve literally anything you want in your life. Is that okay if I do that in general terms? Sure. Yep, thank you. And then the second session is how you actually make it happen, so that should, should, should split it up fairly well. Um, and the reason I want to do the first session is because it was actually the last time in Nottingham that uh, I basically was introduced in a way that really, really, really worried me. And, and, um, and this morning when he introduced me, it was much nicer. Um, basically, I was over at the university, and I was standing just off stage there, and the chairman of, uh, it was, I won't say the bank, but it was four letters. <laughs> and um, he stood up and he said, and, and now we've got a, a very unusual person, and if you're ever introduced like that, the sweat starts straight away. Um, basically, a very unusual person. He's had 25 years' experience in IT, and, in, and not the type of IT you're talking about here, Craig, and people. Really boring IT. I was a Pascal programmer. Anyone here a Pascal programmer? No, I told you I was too old for this conference, Andrew. <laughs> However, I'll carry on. Um, and, and basically, he's 25 years' experience in IT and business and success and leadership. And today, he's going to share every single thing that he's learned over the whole of these 25 years and he's going to do it in just an hour. Well, of course, by this stage, I'm actually perspiring. Because I'm walking on and thinking to myself, how ridiculous is that? How am I supposed to stretch out what little I know about leadership and success to last a complete hour? And Andrew's done it again. He's given me 45 minutes. And again, he said, just share everything that you've discovered in your life. The only thing I've discovered as a fact, and this is a fact, not an opinion, this is an absolute fact, is that no matter what your age, no matter what your background, no matter what your qualifications, your hopes, your dreams, and your fears, every single thing that you need to achieve literally anything that you want, you already have within you right now in this room. That's the first half done in terms of the talk. Um, so we kind of caught up a bit with time there, and, uh, and, and we should get away early. No, seriously, seriously. Doesn't it do your head in when, when you... You know, you go and see these people who keep telling you constantly to be more than what you've become in life. You've made mistakes in life. You know, come on. I remember when you were a child, the mistakes you made. Well, you can't go and change them. So I do not go along with this view of people who tell you to be more than what you've become. Also, and particularly having some people from Chicago and Boston and other places in the States, I love this message. And, and, and very much the message from Los Angeles is, be the best that you can be. The trouble is, quite frankly, as a Brit, I'm not sure how good I can be. I'm really not, because, you know, I, I, I think I come away from the States thinking like that, and then I turn on the news, and somebody's blaming David Cameron for the, for the length of their grass. So I get, I get kind of confused by that. So today I'm not going to. And for you to put into practice what you've heard today, from Craig, from Phil, from Andrew, from all the others, I'm not going to tell you to be more than what you've become. I'm not even going to inspire you to be the best that you can be. I'm simply going to invite you to do something quite unique. I'm going to invite you to decide to be the very best that you already are. The core message that I'm sharing out there in the world is to be the very best you already are. 
What earth am I talking about with that? I'm talking about some amazing facts. You were born, you were all born, by the way, not just you, sorry, I'd like to make it just us, but really everyone, was born with just two natural fears. Please shout out what you think they are. Death. Who said death? Of course, you said that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> I've never heard anyone shout death with such enthusiasm. Are you feeling okay? Okay, can somebody keep an eye on Andrew tonight, please? Because Okay, no, it's not death. You're not born with that fear. Anyone else? Failure? Failure? Sorry, no? Rejection. Reje no. <laughs> Pardon? Okay. Do you like that one? Thank you. That's okay. Um, um, falling is one of them, a fear of falling, which we need in order to learn to walk in the And the other one is a fear of... Hunger. Hunger? No, don't worry. You'll get your dinner later. <laughs> Anyone else? Noise. Now, how do you know this is loud noises? That's brilliant. That's exactly it. Are you a psychologist? No. Neither am I. Um, fear of falling, which you get over in order to learn to walk, and a fear of loud noises, which you got over when you were a teenager. Every other fear you have, you make up. I'll say that again. Every other single fear, every other phobia, every other thing that you don't want attached to you that tells you you can't achieve something, you've made it up because those are the only two natural fears and you get over them. What uh, percentage of your brain do you use on a daily basis according, according to psychologists at Warwick University from recent studies? What site, what, what's that? 10%. Anyone else? 10%, 10%. Pardon? 20%. 20%. 20%. 20%. Anyone else? 2%. Two. Two now we're getting real. Who said two? Well done for remembering. Um, any, anyone else? Don't worry, somebody shouted none in Brighton last week. And, and the, the answer is actually, it's actually 3%. 3%. Now, that's the choice that we use of what's available. Obviously, you're a super genius. Ah, oh, well, we'll go there. Right. Um, finally, just to show how amazing you are and, and, and the astonishing, the astonishing thing that you went through during the nine months when you were in your mother's womb. And I won't go on to this, into this too much because too many people have asked me whether the books are, are sex books. So I won't talk about all that stuff. But it is astonishing and amazing what you've been through in your life. And now, now in terms of things that you want to change in your life, one of them you don't need to think about are things like uh, what happens in your liver when you, maybe you have a few to drink tonight. Your liver is not going to lie there, sit there while you're lying asleep saying, what's that? Oh, I thought your liver was in there. Sorry, thank you. It's not going to lie there thinking, I don't think I'll bother tonight. I think I'll just have a night off. No, what happens in your body if you catch a cold, um, start to catch a cold, your white blood cells, what they do is extraordinary. How often does your skin renew completely? Six months. Who said six months? Who said six months? Big round of applause, please. Six months. Your skin renews every six months. You were right. The rest of us is 28 days. Um, <laughs> and that makes you special. <laughs> but can you imagine, can you imagine the different reaction that, that I and others get when we're out there sharing this message? I mean, think, looking at cultures around the world, you get such a different reaction, don't you? I was in the Birmingham NEC with Eon, the energy giant, just on Monday. 400 people sitting there. I went in, into them and I said, I've never met any of you before in, in your lives, but I promise you this, everything you need to achieve, anything you want, you already have within you. Tell me, have you ever seen 400 people fold their arms at exactly the same <laughs> moment? And then again, over in Los Angeles, one of the greatest, greatest experiences and also the most frightening experience happened to me in Los Angeles when I was working with Coca-Cola. I was with 150 top executives, and I was told you've got them from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and by 1 p.m. we want them inspired. I said, inspired to do what? And they said, doesn't matter. Just, <laughs> just make them inspired. Cheer them up. So I went in at 9 o'clock and I said exactly that same line that you can achieve anything you want with all the skills and strengths and passions you already have. And they all stood up and started cheering. It was the weirdest, most frightening thing that has ever happened to me in my life. Because at one minute past nine, with 150 Americans yelling and whooping, I basically thought to myself, how can I keep this going until one o'clock? <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, for no apparent reason, one guy got on his chair at the back of the room and started shouting, go, Brit, go! <laughs> well, it's just ridiculous, unless he meant go. 
During the first break, though, I had the most astonishing, memorable, and forgettable um, experience I've ever had in doing what I, what I do. This other guy came running down to me, and he stood right next to me, and he said, David, that's the most incredible talk I've ever heard. Do you know what I'm going to do? And I went, personal space. And do you know what he did? He walked with me. Oh, hello. He said, I'm going to find out what hotel you're staying in. He said, I'm going to phone and cancel your room. You and I are going home together tonight. <laughs> Do you like that one, Rob? <laughs> uh, it was to meet his family. There was a bit of a misunderstanding. It wasn't uh, to do anything else. Um, so um, we now have a situation, don't we? On the 1st of July 2011, where over the last 20 years, when you look at this leadership, motivation, inspiration, getting people to take ownership of their lives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as entrepreneurs, as individuals, as small to medium companies, and as big companies, where the last 20 years have not worked. They have not worked. This whole philosophy has not worked. This whole philosophy that you've got something missing. This whole, by the way, if you feel you've got something missing, go and look for it. It's great fun to go around the streets of Nottingham looking for something that isn't there. Enjoy yourself. It's, 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 it's this, these phrases you read all the time, oh yes, well, um, he's, not, he's not the complete article, or she's not the complete article. No, you're the complete article when you're underground or burned. Okay, that's you completed. So before then, actually make the most of your life, and these, what I'm saying to you is that the thing we've missed over the last 20 years in business around the world is that we've focused entirely on change coming in from outside of you. Change programs in organizations, Chain, you've been told what to do, and that never works. It never works. And in the course of listening to today, I've, I've assembled some pretty key things around things that you can do, some actions you can take, real actions, that will put into practice what you've learned today. Before I share with you what they are, though, I think it's important that I get a bit of credibility. I mean, I've mentioned Pascal programming, which gave me no credibility whatsoever. Um, I am a professor down the road at Warwick Business School, but sometimes that doesn't have any credibility either. Let me tell you the three things I did in order to answer the biggest question that I've asked myself. And the big question I asked myself is this. Could it be possible that success, by your definition, doesn't happen by accident? Could it just be possible that when you achieve success, big or small, in your life, it doesn't just happen by coincidence? There are specific things that you do that you don't do when you don't achieve success. Just imagine if that was true. It would mean that you could take conscious control of succeeding more in the future. It can actually mean, if success has these patterns in your past, that if you can work out what those patterns are, you can actually make success inevitable. And that was the question that I asked myself. Could it be possible that success, in effect, comes down to a specific repeatable formula? And I became obsessed with this question. I have spent probably 20 years of my life looking into this question. And I did three main things before I came up with an answer. The first thing I did was proper, structured, academic, methodical research. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Google. Well, I had to get Google into my talk somewhere because Google runs everything, apparently, according to everything today. No, seriously. If you go onto Google and you type in a fact that you believe in, as long as you can find two people in the world who have letters after their names who agree with your point of view, it immediately becomes a fact immediately becomes a fact. And the book you've got in front of you, full of facts. The second thing I did was, and this sounds really dodgy in this country, because what you, I get away with this abroad, but I'm always conscious about us being paranoid about um, sort of this area. Let me put it this way. I spent a lot of time with children. No, that sounds terrible, sorry. Um, I have two children, and I listen to them a lot, and I basically also um, observed other children, if you see what I mean, in the nicest possible way. Um, and there's three key things that I learned from children. The first is that they don't wait. They don't hang around. They don't need a total quality management manual to tell them how to live their lives. I mean, I'm not having a go at total quality management, but wouldn't you rather have deep root canal surgery without anesthetic than ever read one again? Um, go to a playground. Uh, don't, don't get caught or anything. Hide behind a tree so that you're just, do, just with binoculars. Um, and, and you see a little girl, a little boy, and the little girl says, what should we do next? Should we go on the slide? And the little boy says, health and safety. No, they don't. They just go on the slide. The second thing about um, children, I thought of this twice, this phrase has been mentioned today. 
I was at a school in Bradford last week, and basically there was a little girl on the front, we were chatting away about innovation, there's about 400, and she gave this amazing suggestion, and I said to her, that's really thinking outside the box. And she said to me words I'll never forget. She said, what box? <laughs> but we, adult entrepreneurs, have invented this box. And whenever we have brainstorms or thought showers or whatever you call them, the first thing we say to our organizations is, it's important we think out of the box. Don't forget we invented the box in the first place. And the third thing was, again, it was about a 16-year-old boy at a school in Abu Dhabi. The, message, the key message of Naked Leader is be the very best you already are, and I've really been looking to shorten that message. And so I stood in front of this school, and I, was just, I just basically said, um, everything you need to achieve, anything you want, you already have within you. And this boy put up his hand, and I said, yes. And he said, duh. Brilliant. So now the key message is, duh. And that's exactly what it is. Ask yourself this question. Is there anyone else on this planet who has achieved the dream that you want to achieve and they are in poorer circumstances than you? The answer to that is yes, which makes it a choice. It makes it a co complete and absolute choice. And that's the single difference that I've discovered between people who are successful and people who are not, by your own definition, the choices you make. Hands up in this room, all those people who think they've got a pretty good memory. Come on, this is not a time for humility. I know it's the last one of the day. This is really encouraging. I'm an entrepreneur. Seven. Eight. Eight. Oh, I love the, I love the delay. What was the question? Um, nine. Let's say we took the nine of you who think you've got a pretty good... Let's say we took the half of you who think you've got a pretty good memory and put you over here, and the other half of you and put you over there, and we brought in real experts, proper experts, not like me, proper, proper academics, and, and we cut open your brain, and we had a look at what you were thinking, and we really did all sorts of tests on you. What's the only thing that we would discover that's different between the two groups? And it's choice. It is, by the way, choice. So if you don't feel you've got a good memory, you probably find you forget things. And if you'd like to have a good memory, simply decide you've got a good memory. It will work. But not, some of you are looking at me, OK, I've got a good memory. Well, that didn't work. You have to really believe you've got a good memory. And I'll tell you why psychologically that works in a minute. And for the sake of equality, because there's no right or wrong or good or bad in, this, in, this, in sharing this stuff, those of you who feel you've got a good memory, if you'd like not to have a good memory, just decide you don't have a good memory. And now we come to the heart of it. Success has structure. Success has structure. This is the formula for you to follow to achieve guaranteed success. Know where you want to go. Know where you are now. Know what you have to do to get to where you want to go. And then the bit that we always miss off. Do it. Thank you. <laughs> do it. The bit that we just seem to just forget. And I'm going to share with you now that one psychology element behind each part of that and one specific action that you can take that will make sure that you put into practice just one. Andrew, I'm only asking one. Just one thing from the hundreds of how-tos that you've heard today. So please, in order to make this happen, you have to be sitting close to one or two other people. Can you get into groups of two or three? Because if you do this, I promise this will multiply your chance of doing something by 1,000%. Can you get into groups of two or three? Sitting at your table, please. I remember when Warwick invited me to be considered as the, as the professor of leadership, and I thought it was a friend of mine having a joke um, when he wrote when I got the letter, so I put it in the bin, or recycling. Um, then I got another letter, and then I got a third letter, and then I got a phone call saying, what have you got against Warwick? Um, and they said, what we'd like you to do is to come up, and for three hours, we'd like you to present everything you know about success. Well, it's very difficult to make it last three hours, this particular formula. However, everything I'm going to say to you from this moment on I want to say to you is this, totally, absolutely, 100% simple, which is not the same thing as easy. It is not the same thing as easy. The reason that organizations are so complex, and by the way, when I say organizations, I mean organizations of one person sometimes get so complex, is because we actually quite enjoy hiding behind the excuse of complexity. So don't in any way think, don't in any way think that what I'm sharing to you is simple, therefore it must be easy. This is the, I'm going to share with you the four of the toughest things you can ever do in your life. However, they're very, very simple. And the first thing comes here. Know where you want to go. 
Anyone here got children or have brothers or sisters or was a child yourself at any stage in your life? <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Half of you weren't ever children. <laughs> Those are the half of the good memories as well, which is even more interesting. Why do so many, why, why do we say to our children, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because we're hunting for ideas, for ourselves. We are all the time looking, looking all the time. Okay, know where you want to go. Outcomes. What exact outcome do you want, not how, not how you're going to achieve it, what is the biggest outcome, the most ambitious outcome that you want to achieve as a result of today? I want you to dare to raise the bar as high as possible and I want you to share with the person next to you and I promise you I'll, I'll tell you exactly how to achieve it no matter what you share. What outcome do you really want to achieve? Is it a certain income? Is it a certain making the world a better place for some reason? Is it a certain number of hits on your site? Is it a certain number of lists, uh, clients on your list? Or anything else that has been covered during the day? What exact outcome do you want as a result of what you've heard today for you as an entrepreneur or an affiliate or a merchant? Please decide that and make it really specific and share it with the person next to you or the people next to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the reason I'm, the reason I'm stopping you after three minutes is because here's, here's something you need to know, which the psychologists don't want you to know, which so many people don't want you to know. The brain loves speed. Absolutely adores speed. So three minutes is exactly the right period for you to just share what you shared or think what you thought. And whatever you thought was your outcome there, write it down. You have to write it down if you're going to achieve this. You really do. And by the way, don't believe me, okay? Trust your own experience. So maybe you have one, one outcome you write down and one you don't. And I promise you that you'll, you're far more likely to achieve the one you write down. So write it down. Okay, here's some things on outcomes that you'll find fascinating. Over the last... You have a, by the way, you have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. And by the way, I don't, don't know where they... Oh, you're not a psychologist like me, so... Don't exactly, that's my head and my shoulder, I think. Any psychologists in the room? You're a psychologist. You're a psychologist. You're not a psychologist. My degree's a psychologist. You don't have a personal life. <laughs> <laughs> You're a psychologist and you know all this stuff. <laughs> no, no, it's, not, it's a compliment, not an insult. Where did you study? Derby. Derby? Nottingham. Nottingham. Good friends. Um, <laughs> you have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. How many thoughts do you have every minute in your conscious mind? Just shout out. Every minute, how many thoughts do you have? Pardon? Thousands? Thousands? Six thousand. Where's my man who has two? Um, <laughs> how many thoughts do you have? One. One. <laughs> and that's why you're smiling all the time. <laughs> Gosh, what good value these people are at that table. Um, the average is actually about... The average is 20. Um, how many thoughts do you have with your subconscious mind? Billions. 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 Unlimited. Right. <laughs> Now, this is the only thing of any value that psychology degrees at universities all over the world teach you in the whole of the three years. You don't need to bother going. The only exception are two outstanding universities, Derby and Nottingham, <laughs> which cover far, far more in the curriculum. But every other university basically only teaches you one thing of value, and they even keep that quite secret, and it's this. Conscious mind, subconscious mind. Everyone's known for years that we've had two kinds of split like that, or they've had lots of different names. In the last five years, they've discovered more about you and the way your mind works than they did in the previous 500. And the main thing they've discovered is that whenever you believe something to be true with your conscious mind, your subconscious mind starts to make it true, and it does it straight away. Straight away. No hesitation whatsoever. Does it straight away. It doesn't go out and check. It doesn't think, oh, does this person really have a good memory? Is this person really going to be a millionaire? Is this person really going to change the world for good? It just starts to make it true. You're looking at me, you're looking at me strange. I think what I'm saying is when you focus on and believe something with your conscious mind, your subconscious makes it true. Um, I was a warm-up man. For, any Welsh people here? Yeah, where are you from? Swansea. Swansea. Colin Jackson. Colin ja you know Colin Jackson, the Olympian? I was his warm-up man recently, and I went up to him and I said, Colin, what were you looking, what were you, what were you thinking at on the, on the start line when you were looking at all those hurdles? And he said to me, what hurdles? And I must admit, I thought to myself, oh no, I've got the wrong runner. 
But it turned out that what he meant was, if you look above and the space above, you miss them. If you look at the hurdles, you hit them. You automatically move in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. Right, here's the rub, and here's the most important thing with your outcome. It must be, and from now on, and from this very moment, for the rest of your life, if you do this single thing in this one part of the formula, your life will be transformed forever, for good. Focus on what you want, never on what you don't want. And this is not positive thinking. Whether you think positively or negatively, that's up to you. Somebody recently put up their hand and said, I'm a born cynic, David. Well, that's rubbish. If you were born cynic, you wouldn't have come out. <laughs> You have stayed in there as long as possible. Focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Because, conscious, subconscious, because when you focus on what you want, stop, subconscious starts moving you towards it, and because of the quirk of nature that is so cruel. When you focus on what you want, your subconscious automatically moves you closer to achieving it. When you focus on what you don't want, your subconscious actually moves you towards that. In other words, what you don't want. And the quirk of nature, it moves you even faster. Right now, do not think of a massive pink elephant with President Obama on top. Do not think. You can't not think. Yeah, but give me ooh, elephant, ooh, a bottle. There you are. Um, anyone, been to, um, anyone been to Alton Towers? Just around the corner here? Yeah? What, vertical drop roller coaster? Oblivion? What do they say at the top? Don't look down. 28 people? <laughs> Straight in the earth. <laughs> well, not into the earth. Sorry, there's a hole there. Um, and if you do get a chance to cook a meal for a younger child, if you don't have children, just, just borrow one. Um, this is, you'll, you'll see it work in this. Okay, what you do is you, you, you make the, the food and you warm the plates and you walk into them like the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. You've not seen that version. Put the plates down and then say these exact words. Uh, don't touch the plates. They're hot. And your children will touch them straight away. So have a look at the outcome you've written down now. Is it absolutely crystal clear something you want rather than what you don't want? If it is, we'll move on. The second part of the formula, knowing where you are now, comes down to the most uncomfortable thing you will ever hear today. You've got to take ownership of your life. You've got to take 100% ownership of every single thing that you from now on ever say and do. And that includes taking ownership not only of how you act, if you like things that you do proactively, it also means taking ownership of how you react to whatever happens around you. You do that and you're in ownership of your life. How will, you, how will you know whether you're in ownership of your life? Well, instead of saying things like you've said to me today, oh, it's very, it's very difficult when you're at home because you sit down at your PC and you go to Facebook, don't you, because it pulls you in. Has Facebook ever pulled, it's never pulled me in. You must have one of these new fangled PCs I don't have. Um, and then you, you've got to email, don't you, and then you've got to make a cup of tea. What you're saying, what you're basically saying is, oh, I don't really want to be an entrepreneur, I just pretend. I don't really want to be successful as an affiliate. Because look what happens, I sit in my seat and I do everything I can other than what I know I've got to do. So it's up to you whether you're in ownership of your life. You'll know whether you're in ownership of your life or not when you start realizing that this is down to you. It's entirely down to you. Is there any other affiliate on this planet who has achieved what you want to achieve in poorer circumstances. I know it's a repeat of what I said already. The answer is yes. Is there any other affiliate on this, on this planet who will achieve 10,000 times what you want to achieve? And the answer is yes. So it's entirely to, down to you. So when you say it's not difficult, you, what you're saying is, I'm making it difficult. When you say mm, it's not fair, you're saying, I'm making it not fair. You have to personalize it. So have a look at your outcome now. Just as I'm talking about the, one of the key, the key part, really, of the formula, which is know what you have to do to get to where you want to go. And look at it now and just say, is that down to me? Can I make that happen? Can I make that happen? And if you can, you might want to sign your name under it. A bit cheesy, perhaps. Just decide that's what I'm going to do. And you'll know when you're deciding what to do because you'll feel it in your heart. And the third part of the formula is know what you have to do to get to where you want to go. And this is where there's an interesting concept. Sorry, I even, I even breathe in. Even though I've been talking about this for many years, in the light of today, this is going to be one of the tr tr most challenging things. This is where you look at your outcome, you take ownership of it, and you make an absolute 100% true decision that that's what you're going to achieve, and you will never, ever, 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 ever settle for anything less. How long does it take to do that? Heartbeat. 
How long does it take to do that? We'll delay it as long as possible. We'll do anything we can to delay that moment. We go to meetings in our, in our organizations, and I'm talking about an organization, be it one person or 500 people, and we have meetings on a Monday, don't we? Weekly meetings or whatever day you have them. And you make a decision, and you go back the following week, and you find they're still discussing the same decision you thought they'd made about a week ago. You know, and then you find you're just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. We'll do anything we can to delay making a true decision. We'll start blaming bo boxes and comfort zones. Let me tell you about comfort zones. Comfort zones are irrelevant to your success. Most people in comfort zones are as scared as hell. People don't have comfort zones anymore. People have familiarity zones. We will always revert to what's most familiar to us. If it is most familiar to you that when you sit down with your coffee in the morning, even though you're a, maybe a peak morning person, if it's most familiar to you that you go on email, breaking that and writing the first chapter, if I may point at you. And so Phil is going to write a best-selling book about Copyright. copywriting. I thought that deserved a round of applause, actually. Oh, <laughs> Phil, Naked Copywriting is available. I'm talking the title now, not, not you doing it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it will decide whether you write one... You're going to write this book, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Whether you go in and write the first word, the first word of your book, in which case you're not going to write it anymore, you are now a writer, or whether you go on to email. Well, that's the most psychological way to get a book written, is not to, I'm going to write a book, to actually write one. What's the first word of your book going to be? <laughs> the? The. the? What a great first word. You're now a writer. You are now writing your book. And by the way, when you tell people this, they'll think you're stupid. They'll think you're mad. When you go out and say, do you know what? Before I walked into that day and heard from all these experts, these amazing people, I decided as an affiliate I was going to earn £50,000 next year. When you go back and say, I've actually decided I'm going to write, earn half a million, people will say you're mad. They'll say you're very, very crazy. There is no shortage of people out there telling you what you cannot do. And everyone who tells you what you cannot do is doing it because they can't do it for themselves. Never forget that. People who tell you you can't achieve something in life, who are lying, by the way, because you can, are doing it so they can feel more comfortable in their, com in their familiarity zone that you won't achieve it either. The great news is, and I know this from personal experience, is that when you do go out and achieve it, these will be the same people who come to you and say, always knew you'd do it. <laughs> Never any doubt. I was behind you all the way. And so we come to the key moment of the whole day, and I'm not dis being disrespectful to any of the other talks, that brings everything together. And the key moment of this day is actually not going out and doing it. The key moments of this day is whether you are going to absolutely commit in looking at that outcome you've written down that you will not settle for anything less than that outcome. Three minutes last time, two minutes at your table or with your three, make the commitment, not in a big tree-hugging way, just in, are you actually going to commit to another human being that you're going to do it? Decide that now. Two minutes. Okay, that's two minutes. Well done. That's two minutes. The brain loves you. Remember, the brain is mortal, very mortal. Loves quick decisions. Loves quick decisions. Um, we, we're going to run until 10 past 5 because we had a bit of extra time for coffee, if that's okay. Is that all right with everyone? Sure. Great, thank you. Until 10 past 5. Just stick with me and I promise you that you will, as a result of leaving here, actually carry something through. Right. Now, although you've made a true decision, there are going to be a number of forces, I call them the forces of evil, but that's just to be dramatic, um, that are going to work against you after you leave this room that will get you to change that decision. The first one is other people's opinion. Remember, that's all it is. It's people's opinion. The second is that facts about you. And here's a few facts about you that may hold you back. The first fact about you is that um, who are you to be successful? Well, who are you not to be? And of course, when I first started with this message, I was very keen to find out how many people out there achieve success against the odds. Everyone achieves success against some kind of odds. Absolutely everyone. The one I thought was, I heard was an overnight success, by the way, last week, was Bruce Springsteen. Um, he's not very well known. Um, he's an American singer. Um, he did a few things. Um, and basically, I then go online and I discover that actually Bruce Springsteen, um, when he did his first um, uh, voice, voice track to get a record, was told that his voice was so horrible, so nasty, that was the word they used, and so gravelly that he will never become a singer, ever. So he may as well give up. 
and eight years later, he got his first recording contract. The fascinating thing about that is, I don't know if you know the story of Live Aid, Bob Geldof and Har Harvey G Goldstein, they actually switched the date of Live Aid by a date, by a date by a week because of Bruce Springsteen not being available. They'd already booked 36 bands on this one date, and they got hold of Bruce Springsteen and said, can you make that date? No, but I can make it the following week. So they basically said, yeah, that's okay. So the guy who changed Live Aid by, by one uh, day, sorry, one week, was rejected for eight years, six months, three weeks, and one day. And that's called an overnight success. And that's going to come to the key part with the fourth, on the fourth part of the formula. <coughs> Excuse me. The biggest thing working against you, now that you, now you know how your um, conscious and subconscious work, now you've made your true decision, decision regret. I said earlier that this is about choice, not change. Because your skin renews every 28 days, because of the white blood cells, because of the liver. There's lots of things changing happening inside us. It's choice that is key. And if you only remember one phrase from the whole of this session, remember this. From the moment you were born until the moment you die, you will only ever, you will only ever achieve something to the best of your ability for one reason and one reason alone. And that's if you want to. So choice is very powerful. Choice these days, there's too much of it. There are too many variations out there. Three quick stories. My daughter, who went on a gap year around the world, got in the car at Gatwick Airport, hadn't seen her for a year. She got in with her friend, and the first thing she said to her daddy was, I hate you. And I said, well, thank you very much. Why do you say that? And she said, because you talk about choice. And you told me ever, ever since I was about three months old, I could achieve anything I want. And now I haven't got a bloody clue what I want to do. The second, the second example of choice is Starbucks or any other coffee shop on the high street, Costa, whatever. I'm old enough, and I'm probably the oldest person in the room, I'm old enough to remember when you went into a coffee shop and you asked for a coffee and something quite radical happened. They gave you one. <laughs> None of you have probably ever experienced that. These days you ask for a coffee and they say, please take your seat in the mastermind chair. I have 20 questions for you which you have to answer exactly before you get anywhere near your coffee at the end of the counter. What size do you want? Large or small? What kind of milk do you want? What kind of grain? Oh, it's just unbelievable. And of course, any of you have got Sky? Anyone here with Sky? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think anyone's ever managed to watch a program all the way through recently. I, I haven't watched one for five years. But I certainly enjoy flicking through because it really upsets my wife. And if any men in here, by the way, are thinking, I don't know what he's talking about. I love change. I eat it for breakfast. If you have Sky, give the remote control of Sky to your wife or partner for an evening. And just say, there you, are, there you are, darling, you go through the channels. If you haven't got a wife or partner, just go and find one. Um, you, you go through the channels and really annoy me tonight. And so we come to the final part, which is going out and actually doing it and brings the whole day together. Not to a close. In many ways, I look at the experts we've had today. Phenomenal knowledge, phenomenal experience, and phenomenal desire to share with all of us today. And I look at you and I think, wow, that's almost like that was one event. And all I'm doing is being the link between that one event and the future. And the link means that this is not actually the close, this is the opening. This is now the start of what you choose to do as a result of today. You've had probably, being serious, you've probably had over 600 specific how-tos today. And that's wonderful, and it's also the problem. If you go to Google and you type in fishing, as I did, because I can't, don't really like fishing, I just went on there uh, during the break, I found 17 and a half million hits in 0 0.07 seconds, which is really impressive. The trouble is, which one do I go to? Which one is going to help me make my dream come true if I was interested in fishing? And this part of the formula came together, and once again, I involved my daughter. She came home from school one day. Actually, she came home every day. It's the first time I've ever said that. She came home came home from school on one particular day. And I asked her what she did at school. And what did she say? Nothing. Thank you. David Cameron, education. Um, so I said, what do you do at school today? And she said, nothing. If you do have young children, uh, or are up to sort of 14, 15, three little tips to change, the, change your relationship. Number one, raise your voice with them as often as you can. Number two, speak slower at them, because that makes them think you think they're fit thick. And number three, if you can also put your head right up to their head, they really hate that. Don't write those down. Will you? Some of you are writing that down. That is a joke, OK? <laughs> what do you do at school today, Olivia? Nothing. Stormed up a bit of raising, because we're really intellectual, aren't we? we just, if you're having an argument with somebody, what are you doing at school today? Nothing. I say, what are you doing at school today? Louder. She says, nothing, and stormed upstairs. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
Thursday, and then on Friday, Rosalind, my wife, whispered the words that have brought me into this room with you today. She said, just before you ruin our family evening again, please remember this. If you do what you've always done, you will get what you have always got. So, you've decided on an outcome. You've taken ownership of it. You did it straight away. What did you say there? You said, I don't need, I don't need, I need two minutes, do I, to make a true decision. You took ownership of it. You took ownership of it straight away. You made that true decision. And now all I invite you to do is go and do one thing. Just take one action. I want you literally to look through your notes from today, to remember what's been shared with you by the speakers, what you've shared with each other, what you're going to share tonight at dinner and in the private bar, which I understand is free. She didn't tell me that when I said I couldn't make it. Um, <laughs> what one thing, just one thing. There is a conspiracy, and it's called the surefire way to fail conspiracy, which is you have to have it all worked out. You have to have it all worked out. You want to be, you want to be, you want to win that prize? Who was talking about the prize for the affiliates earlier on? A, a, an astonishing prize that's going to be presented in the league table of the football. Was it? Yeah, Scott, wasn't it? And if you want to win that, do you want to win that? Maybe that's your one thing that you're going to focus on. But what happens is we think of loads of different things. We think of loads of different things we have to do, and we have to work it all out. And while you're working it all out, one person said, well, here's the first action I'm going to take. All you need to do to be successful is focus on the first thing you're going to do. Because when you focus on that first thing, there is a specific thing that happens in your brain, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Right now, though, I want you to turn to the person with you, next to you, and decide what's the first action you're going to take, what are you going to do, how are you going to do it, and when are you going to do it. And this time, I'm going to give you one minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. One thing. Just one thing. I've made the decision on what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite all our, forget the language, it gets worse as the day goes on, crappy websites in WordPress. Yeah. Goodness knows where we'll start and goodness knows what reaction I'll get, but thank you. You made WordPress sound so sexy. Oh. I don't own it, so I'm going to get any from it. <laughs> know where you want to go. Have a clear outcome and make sure from now on you find yourself focusing on what you want, not what you don't want. I wish I didn't have all these distractions. What do you want instead? I wish I didn't have all these people around me telling me I'm weird because I'm trying to work for myself. What do you want instead? Decide exactly what you want and be as specific as you can. And by the way, I know specific. I was chairman of a football club, Woking. Okay? I was chairman of Woking Football Club. And the local press got hold of me and they said, right, we've looked at your books. And we know how you think. What's your formula for guaranteed success? And I said, oh, no, I'm not doing that on football. Football's a different solar system. Oh, come on, David, tell us. What are you going to achieve for Woking? I said, OK, I'm going to get us out of this division within three years. And I did. Within one, we went down. <laughs> oh, God, it's so embarrassing. And people say to me, after, often I say that, and they say, is that true? Go on Google. Type David Taylor Woking, and the first thing you'll say is wanker, which will be from one of the Woking, <laughs> one of the Woking fans. I, I walk around Woking in disguise now, because both the fans are really upset. Um, be really specific about what you want. Take ownership of your life. And by the way, take ownership of your life. Remember, when you were younger, you heard the word no from your parents 400 times more than you heard the word yes. That's because they loved you. I hope. I mean, you, and if, if you want to help the self-esteem of any child that you know, and it works up, it works up to that age, but if, you know, imagine you were very young, say, and you, you wandered into your, you wandered into your all very early developer, so about the age of three weeks, you wander in the kitchen, and, and you're looking for a cup of tea or whatever, and the kettle's already boiling, so you reach up, and your mum turned around and said, no, 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 no. You're not stupid. You get it on the first no. You really do. The other 11 knows you don't know what to do with. But she's your mummy. She loves you. So do you know what you do, literally? You store them up in your head. You store them up. And so in those moments of doubt, when that little voice in your head is saying, you can't achieve this, you really think you can achieve all this? That's where it comes from. So take ownership. All I'm asking you to do, this is not a motivational talk. I'm just asking you, whenever you think about what you really could achieve in life, to consider the possibility that you can't do it, as long as you also consider the possibility that you can. 
All I'm asking is a level playing field. And then do the most powerful thing you can ever do, which is make a true decision and then go and do the one thing that you've agreed to do. And ask yourself this question when you've carried it out. I, does that action take you closer to where you want to go or does it move you further away? If it takes you closer to where you want to go, do more of the same. If it takes you further away, then do something else. If that doesn't work, do something else. If that doesn't work, do something else. This is why I need the extra 10 minutes. If that doesn't work, do something else. If that doesn't work, do something else. If that doesn't work, do something else. Or give up. And if you do give up, can you stop complaining about it, please? Because you're doing our heads in. Either keep going or shut up. And I'm sorry to be so direct with you, but I've seen such talent in this room. I've spoken to people up on, on what, you're going to, what you're going to achieve. It took me 25 years to get out of corporate life. You know, you've got 25 years on me. You can achieve so much. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Please. The number one thing on this final part of the formula is this question. How many times are you going to get back up again? When you're not back in life, and you will be, how many times are you going to get back up again? Success will come down to how often you get back up again. J.K. Rowling, Stephen King, The Beatles. Oh, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands.